Hello and welcome back to Logitech G at E3. I'm Louise and I'm joined by Solomon from Microsoft and today we're going to talk about the Xbox Adaptive Controller. Today we're talking about the Xbox Adaptive Controller which is going to be out in September this year. But how does it actually work? Hopefully, Solomon, you can tell me a little bit about that. Tell me, what is the Xbox Adaptive Controller? So first and foremost, the Xbox Adaptive Controller is an Xbox controller. So even out of the box, just because it looks different, it doesn't work any differently. So it will work with PC, works with Xbox, it's just shaped differently. So essentially what we've done is we've taken all of the main controls of a standard controller and we've externalized them, and that's what these ports on the back here are. They're using a standard 3.5 millimeter jack, which is the industry standard for adaptive switches. So anyone with limited mobility who uses switches already will just be able to plug and play, which is sort of the idea to reduce barriers between gamers and their games. And that was one of the easiest choices we had to make in this. Can you talk about anything, current games that are perhaps, that you can talk about that are using new ways to play of anything that's been released this year or? So I don't know of anything at this point that is specifically designed to use this, but that's sort of the beauty of this. They don't have to be yeah. because it uses all the controls. I personally use it to play things like Destiny 2, Sea of Thieves, play uh, Far Cry 5, Conan, Exiles, like really I've got a long list of games on my, on my schedule, but what I do is I just make a new setup every time I want to try something new, and I change the digital profile if I want to switch back and forth between things quickly, and it's just that easy. It only takes a few minutes out of box to plug things in and get going, and it's been great. But I know there has been interest expressed by a number of different developers, Microsoft Studios, Partner Studios as well, to really embrace this hardware and look at ways that we can design the digital experience, the software side of things, based around this sort of hardware layout. So nothing coming right now that I'm aware of, but I know there's a lot of interest and people are definitely looking forward to it. Yeah. So when it comes to um, people who have sort of limited mobility, mm -hmm. What kind of other things do people need once they have the adaptive controller and what can it really allow them to do? So out of the box, you've got these two big buttons, you've got your directional pad and everything here that will allow you to navigate through the system as is and even play some games, navigate through applications and things like that. In order to do more complex configurations, you need different switches, joysticks like Logitech joysticks or um, any number of other mouth switches, head switches, big buttons, proximity sensors, anything that'll work on a 3.5 millimeter jack, you can use. It's just a matter of what your imagination wants to do and how complex you want your controls to be. Well, before we go into sort of the yeah. imagination of what we can do, <laughs> um, Logitech were very much involved in the mm -hmm. creation of the adaptive controller. Can you tell me how, how that happened and how it... Yeah, this was a... This started, the development of this project started three years ago at Microsoft's One Week Hackathon, which is in the Guinness World Records as the largest hackathon in the world. So we get together every July and we go nuts. We do whatever we want, we create projects. And so back in 15, this came out of that process. And so a big part of the hardware development process for the Xbox Adaptive Controller was working with our partners. So partners like Logitech, uh, but also community partners like Special Effect, uh, Warfighters Engaged, Able Gamers, uh, Craig Hospital in Denver, which specializes in spinal injuries because these were the folks who had been cracking our controllers and making custom stuff for a long time anyway, and who had the most contact with the gamers that would use it. So we went to them and we said, help us make a better controller. So for most of the life of this project, it was involved, actually the entire project, we had community involvement from all of our partners to say, let's make this the best we can, let's answer all the questions up front that we can and design it while we're designing it for one limited mobility use case, we want to extend that out to as many people as we can. So that, Logitech's been instrumental in that. That's really going to change things for all those creators who've been working very hard on creating individual setups yeah. uh, for uh, limited mobility gamers because it, it's always different every time. So this unlocks all of that. Will Absolutely. there be things that you don't even know that people will be able to do with it? What are you most excited to see? I am certain people are going to come up with all sorts of interesting things. I've heard about all kinds of different switches being built using uh, old game CDs, using piano pedals. If you have the electrical knowledge to wire to a 3.5 millimeter jack, you can build your own switch, which is what people have been doing. What this does, what the Xbox Adaptive Controller does, is it takes all of the heavy lifting of the engineering out of it. So if they can wire it, they can use it. Uh, 
Although we have a wonderful selection of switches and devices that are going to be available at launch that are being made by lots of our wonderful partners, like Logitech, like PDP, and some folks like that, uh, I can't even begin to imagine myself all of the different configurations people are going to come up with and all of the ways that this is now going to enable people to play. I mean, I know how I use it. I know my switch setup and things like that. But what I use is going to be vastly different from what anyone else is going to use because what this does is it's personal. It's about you. It's about how you want a game. And it allows you to design the controls to fit you and your situation. It's now the ideal time for this. Was it sort of build up of tech of the way that the Xbox runs that enabled this to happen, really? Would that be fair to say? It is. I think this is the outgrowth of a shift in Microsoft as a whole that happened uh, with the addition of Satya Nadella as our CEO. He has made accessibility a huge pillar of what he believes the company should be doing. And so that, along with our new inclusive design principles, which are, as I mentioned earlier, one of them, uh, designed for one extent to many, recognize exclusion and be inclusive, and then uh, learn from diversity. Those are all things that have, that have been embraced by the company as a whole. This is just really the first piece of hardware that we've seen come out of that, out of that new mindset. But it's certainly not gonna be the last. In terms of ease of use, mm -hmm. when someone gets it, is there YouTube tutorials and that kind of thing that they can they can learn new ways to do it? Or there will be there are guidance documents in the box. There will be, I'm sure, different ways through Xbox.com and things like that through the support website. But also for those who are located in North America or Australia or soon to be London, you can go to your local Microsoft store as well, and they will help you set up and pick your switches. Also, amazing! So. Well, thank you very much. You're really welcome. excited. So the Xbox Adaptive Controller is out in September this year, and you. You can pre-order just now, or even if you want to find out a little more, head to xbox.com. Um, thank you very much for your time, Solomon. My pleasure. If you enjoyed the video today, drop us a like, and if you have any more questions about the Xbox Adaptive Controller, please pop them in the comments and we'll try to answer them in a future video. Um, and if you're looking for any more information on E3 2018, subscribe and we'll update you all the time.